Hey there, Alex here. OnePlus is back again with a new phone, the OnePlus 6. It's largely the same formula as its predecessor, which means top-of-the-line performance, great software experience, and a price tag that is still lower than most flagship devices. But sticking to the same formula means that it has a pretty similar set of compromises as well. So without further ado, let's just dive right in and see if the phone is still worth buying, especially with its higher price tag. It starts from the outside with a more refined design. I'm not a huge fan of glass bags, but I do like the symmetrical layout of the camera hardware and fingerprint sensor. Even though it seems a bit smaller, this is still one of the fastest fingerprint sensors around. Before you start mourning the loss of the alert slider, don't worry, it's still here. It's just on the other side of the phone instead. I use my phone with my right hand most of the time, so I do appreciate this minor change. For left-handed folks, you have my condolences. The display got a nice upgrade and now fills up almost the entire front of the phone. There is a little notch at the top that houses a few hardware components, and I really don't mind it at all since it gives me a bit more screen to work with. Anyway, you can turn it off if you really hate it. The display is still an AMOLED panel and still just Full HD+. It is still a good looking screen with decent colours and outdoor visibility. It's not the best AMOLED screen I've seen, but it's good enough for its price. Something that OnePlus devices have always excelled in is performance. With the latest processor and a lot of RAM and storage, the phone just flies through everything. This is probably the fastest Android phone I've tested so far. Part of that speed might be thanks to the relatively clean software experience as well. Oxygen OS looks relatively close to stock Android and comes with useful customizations and features. The ability to use a dark theme and change the accent colors is still one of my favorite customization options, especially on an AMOLED screen. Features-wise, double tap to wake and sleep is always nice to have, especially with the ultra-fast face unlock feature. The customizable reading mode is pretty handy if you read a lot. Being able to lock apps is really useful if you have sensitive information on your phone. And the ability to run two WhatsApp accounts is pretty handy for a dual SIM device. It also has the ability to use gestures for navigation, which gives me even more screen real estate. I know Android P will be bringing its own take on it, but OnePlus's implementation is actually pretty good. It's quite intuitive once you get used to it. This combination of great hardware and well-optimized software also brings decent battery life. Despite a slightly smaller 3300mAh battery, the phone can last me a full day of use pretty easily. Even though it lacks wireless charging, I don't think it's a big deal since dash charging is so good. It's still the fastest charging solution I've used. The only downside is that it requires a proprietary charger and cable. So even if you have other Type-C cables around, it's not going to give you fast charging. Before we move on to the cameras, I do have a few things that I want to talk about in regards to the hardware. While it's nice to have a headphone jack still, the speaker on the phone is mediocre at best. It's loud, but sounds quite tinny. With so many devices utilizing some sort of dual speakers already, it's getting harder and harder to ignore this shortcoming. Not to mention that it's also really easy to block the speaker when using the phone in landscape. Water resistance is another feature that's table stakes for flagship devices too. While the company did claim that it's splash resistant, which is a nice step up from its predecessor, having it IP rated would give buyers a bit more confidence in its durability. Finally, we get to the cameras. This time round, the secondary camera just seems to be for depth data instead of using a different focal length. Despite that, shots in portrait mode are pretty average looking. The more important upgrade is actually to the main camera sensor, which is 19% larger than its predecessor, as well as the return of hardware stabilization, which really shows when it comes to low light shots. Here are some shots I took in full auto mode, and I think they look pretty good. I also like the improvements to the front camera as well, which now takes pretty good images even at night. Video quality is really good too with nice stabilization. I did notice a bit of focus hunting sometimes, but OnePlus says that they're working on a fix. It also has support for 4K 60 frames per second recording, as well as 720p 480 frames per second slow motion recording, both of which works rather well. The link to everything I took with the OnePlus X can be found in the video description below, so be sure to check them out. I do find that this is a noticeably better camera than the OnePlus 5T, especially in low light, and it actually compares pretty favorably to other flagship devices. It's still not quite up there with the big boys just yet, but it's getting pretty close. Overall, the OnePlus 6 is an unsurprisingly good phone, since it takes pretty much the same approach as its predecessor. 
It is still a good option if you're looking for a big screen, the best performance possible, and a clean software experience without paying flagship level money. But as the prices continue to climb with each generation, it has gotten to a point where it's no longer the most value you can get for your money these days. It's just decently priced considering its compromises. If OnePlus really wants to keep increasing their prices, they need to step up their game too. Thanks for watching my review of the OnePlus 6. If you have enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Thanks again and see you guys on the next one.